real estate, it's all about location, location, location. But if you live on or even near the water, I'd think about selling now, now, now. Because the sea is coming, and there's not a single thing we can do to stop it. It's sea level rise. It doesn't normally make the news, especially in election years, but it's starting to because coastal flooding is up to our doorstep more and more often, and not just from hurricanes or even thunderstorms, just regular high tides. You remember the story of Noah and all that water? He devised a plan for a rising tide, though he did have a good advisor. <laughs> and all you have are tide gauges, maps, and anxious data nerds like me. I work with something called LIDAR. It's basically a box of lasers that we put up in an airplane to get elevation values. Values that we then use to figure out where sea level change will affect first. We look at rivers, beaches, estuaries, and coastal cities all across the country to document change. And business is pretty good because change is the only constant. And I, I'm not talking about climate change today, and I don't really care if you do or don't believe in that, because what I'm talking about is something easily measurable, natural, and it's been around for millennia. And it's also something that I will still be talking to my two-month-old son about when he's my age. This is the Charleston Battery at the tip of a coastal city centered around the tides. Even when I go to the beach, I check the tide schedule because more often than not nowadays, there's nowhere to sit or even walk at high tide. When I go here, I don't really bother because I know it's safe for now, thanks to that wall, a wall that we've had to repair for 300 years. Otherwise, this part of town wouldn't even exist. But soon, that wall is not gonna be enough. Over on the other side of Charleston, there's Morrison Drive. It's a busy four-lane street. Even today, right now, there's water on it. Two days ago was the highest tide of the year. It looks like this. It's important, because see that in the background? That's an elementary school. These tides, they call them nuisance floods. What they are are a sign of a rising tide, rising sea. It's coming and slowly moving further inland. And it's not just Charleston, it's other coastal cities. Seattle, San Francisco, Miami, Norfolk, Washington DC, miles upriver from the coast. They're all taking notice. I look at sea level rise like the wind bending a tree. And after many storms, that tree starts to lean. But eventually, that lean becomes absolutely normal. Today, high tide is a flood. But eventually, it'll be a new normal. In 2020, just four years away, Charleston will have 30 nuisance floods. 30 floods like this. That's two per month. By 2050, based on what we're doing now, we're going to have one every other day. It'll be our new normal. And we can actually measure how our normal is changing. This is the Charleston Harbor tide gauge. It's a chart showing 100 years, basically, and a little over three feet of change. Let me repeat that. One century and basically one meter. Sure, the tides fluctuate daily, but eventually we can see where it's moving. And this is where it's moving. This is the Charleston Peninsula from an aerial view with current water levels in blue. We can see our battery down south in white, our unprotected elementary school up north, and that little star, that's actually us here at the Charleston Music Hall. By using elevation as a guide, we can actually see what one foot of change would look like. Turns out we lose most of our green infrastructure, and uh, like our wetlands, and we start to lose a little bit of our gray infrastructure. But at two feet, at two feet, that's our first tipping point. We start to lose a lot of gray infrastructure, like our roads and our buildings and ports and seawalls. And we've hidden the effects at one foot 
in those things. But our, our first tipping point, we can actually see water come up and around our protected battery. And an historic part of Charleston is underwater all the time. And at three feet, we're too late. And only drastic plans make any sense. We're dry here, but the rest of the peninsula is much, much smaller because where that blue stops is actually our new normal shoreline. This is inevitable, folks, just like death and taxes. It's a hard sell for those who don't believe, think it's nonsense, or don't care because they don't expect to be here later. And all places have dangers. Yeah, we know that, but this one we can see from just a few feet away, and we're not avoiding it. Actually, it looks like we're moving in the opposite direction on that. We keep moving closer to the sea, yet the sea is moving closer to us, and at some point, it's just going to be cheaper and safer and easier to move. But our culture believes that we can engineer our way out of anything. But I disagree, because I side with Mother Nature, because she begs to differ. This is Fire Island up in uh, New York, off of Long Island. It's a great example of what happens pretty often. This is a breach. The little arrow's up there to give you context to see where the water moves, but in a short amount of time, we can see a drastic change. Same thing happened here in Charleston. One of my favorite islands, Sullivan's Island, used to be connected to Isle of Palms, and then it just split naturally. It's normal. It's okay. Natural change is okay. We just need to change, too. But it's all a gamble of when, not if. And I'm not a gambling man. So when I bought a house here in Charleston, I bought far inland. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to lose my house to a tide. I want to complete my 30-year mortgage. <laughs> Mortgages are expensive, especially on the beach even after the house is gone. Can you imagine driving to work in one foot of water every day? Maybe, around here. What about three feet? Now imagine that's salt water. It's not good. What about 10 feet, eventually? At some point, you might as well get rid of your car and buy that boat you've been wanting. It's gonna be easier to get around anyway. And our cities are going to look more like a marshy version of Venice, Italy than what they look like today. And just wait. Just wait until another Hugo or another Matthew comes with these higher water levels. We got lucky that Matthew hit last week. It's unfortunate to say that, but if they had hit this week during the highest tides of the year, it'd been more destruction. So something that we all need to do, myself included, that's what I'm doing right now. I need to get the word out. Tell people that this is real. Start spreading the news that there's a slow moving danger, just as serious as any hurricane moving right at us. That coastal flooding is just a sign. And selling your house doesn't sound so crazy after all. Humanity's greatest strength has always been its ability to adapt. But the capability to adapt has to come from awareness. So let's do that. Let's make people aware. Show them it's real. Only then can we truly make a good plan. Only then can we follow Noah as the example and put together a plan. We've seen the warning signs. All we have to do is follow that sign. Thank you. Thank you.